people just to remind at the end to remind to the people joining from india so um this is the first of a three series lecture we are going to do on neonatal encephalopathy and i'm sudin tayel i lead the uh, brain research at imperial so the first one is on um, doing a structured neurological examination on babies with uh, neonatal encephalopathy so i'll go through you know how to uh, the what are the different components of the examination and then i will show you some videos which uh, you need to score so the first few videos we'll do it jointly i'll send you the link to do that and you would also have a certification form which is attached as a word document to the chat um if you if you are able to access it that'll be great it would be good to have your phone um um do the scoring using your phone rather than your computer screen if you're joining by computer so now why do we need to do a structured neurological examination in a baby with uh, neonatal encephalopathy there are two main reasons one is that uh, that decides the treatment uh, that baby will receive which is currently cooling therapy so we can we decide the treatment based decisions based on this neurological examination so we don't cool babies who are normal we don't cool we should not cool babies who have mild encephalopathy and we should cool only babies who have moderate or severe encephalopathy and this examination will tell you how to do that in a systematic way the second is that um, it is of diagnostic and it's also of prognostic importance if you have a baby who is normal or have mild encephalopathy you are likely to have a, a good outcome as opposed to a baby with uh, moderate or severe encephalopathy now any clinical examination is very subjective but if you do a uh, systematic training um, it you can reduce the subjectivity and the nicht examination it's based on the modified sarnax staging is one of the best validated clinical examinations we have um, for this condition so if you just put a series of references here so it is originally yeah hello so it was originally described by sarnet and sarnet in 76 and it's amazing how that has stood the test of time as so all these high profile publications since then more after the cooling trial started um so since 2005 there's a series of very high profile uh, publications validating um the scoring system now and the most recent one being um, our own marble study from imperial so i'll go through these papers um, a bit later so like i said this is modified from the original sarnet staging so sarnet staging um, was developed by dr sarnet and sarnet the husband and wife and they're still um, working um, somewhere in canada um, and they're doing quite well so this was in 1976 now the key difference between the original sarnet staging and the modified sarnet staging which was developed by sita shankaran is that the original sarnet staging is a retrospective diagnosis you cannot do it when you see the baby for the first time at 6 or 7 hours or 3 or 4 hours of age you can do it only after a few days depending upon how the clinical condition of the baby progressed over um, the first few hours and days after birth but that doesn't really help you in making clinical decisions in real time so that's why sita shankaran modified the sarnet staging to make it in a modified sarnet stage um, for the cooling trials in 2005 the other key difference is that sar original staging records eeg but the modified one does not it's a purely clinical examination anybody can do anywhere in the world in high income countries or in developing countries as long as you do it in a systematic way now we looked at the prognostic accuracy most recently in this marble study like i said and the the accuracy of it's never going to be 100% accurate the most accurate uh, biomarker you have after hi is of course mri scan and mr spectroscopy but if you do a good standardized um, neuro exam within 6 hours of birth you got an area under the curve of 0.72 for predicting a adverse outcome which is very similar to what you get if you do cerebral function monitoring using amplitude integrated eeg 
So you really, if you do a good neuro exam, you really don't need the CFM monitoring. Now, there are six uh, components of the NICHD staging, which I'll explain later. And uh, these are the six components, sensorium, spontaneous activity, posture, tone, reflexes, and autonomic system. And each has got, a, um, um, individually, they are not that great in predicting the outcome. The, the area under the curve will be something like 0 0.3, 0 0.4. But when you combine them, the accuracy increases. So the on the bottom, you can see, uh, I don't know if you can see my the arrow here, it's 0 0.72 is the area under the curve for predicting uh, adverse outcome. That is when you classify this babies as mild, moderate, or severe encephalopathy. You can also do it in a numerical way and create something called a total Sarner score, but that doesn't really increase the prognostic accuracy. And this is how you do the total Sarner score. So I will just show you this graph, but I will not discuss this any further because often people like numerical values when, um, when monitoring a baby, you know, a score going from three to five or five to 10, you think things are getting worse or things are getting better. It can give you a numerical value, but the question is if that is that of any real benefit, um, I'm not sure. So if you create a total standard score, the score will be something between zero to 16. And if it is more than um, four, your, as the score increases, your chance of adverse outcome increases um, but like i said the prognostic accuracy is no better than just doing the standard <coughs> uh, classification as mild moderate or severe encephalopathy so these are the area under the curves there what you sh now in the toby trial three criteria were used and amplitude integrated age was a mandatory criteria in the toby trial now, the issue was that when we started doing pooling as a clinical thing, not everybody had CF CFM monitoring. So the CFM went off. Now, the issue is that if you don't use CFM as a criteria, then you're relying on the neuro exam. But the neuro exam in the TOBI trial was not as standardized as the NICHC trial. Now, what happens? Uh, what then happened is that people ended up cooling a lot of babies who who have mild encephalopathy who actually don't meet the cooling criteria because uh, um, um, because the structured neuro exam is not done any baby with a normal cfm is very likely to be a no very likely to be normal or have mild encephalopathy and many of the babies we cool now at imperial and in the uk do have um, normal um, CFM, which is a bit worrying, which is essentially cooling babies with mild encephalopathy. But if you do a structured examination with an ICHD, then you can reduce um, this from happening. Now, so this is the TOBI criteria. If you just remove the uh, CFM, uh, it just says any of those, either some abnormality in the level of consciousness or in one of them, but it's not really kind of tell you how to look for this and how to categorize it, which is there in the NICHD um, examination. What you should not do uh, um, is something called the Thomason score. This is a score which is developed by Delaf for use in um, low resource setting, mainly in African settings. And if you look at this score, it's immediately apparent uh, this, the way it's categorized is not very physiological. Any baby with seizure, we take it very seriously. Seizures occur, um, uh, we consider that as a, at least it's a moderate or severe encephalopathy. But here you can have, you know, like the seizures and still be mild. Many other things, Fontanelle uh, examination is not that useful in, in babies with encephalopathy. And there's a lot of overlapping, um, moro, grasp, suck, etc. because all of them are autonomic um, changes. And when you just add up them, it's not a very physiological way to do. So I would not recommend using Thompson score um, for either uh, decision-making about cooling or for monitoring these babies. Now, normally we do the NICHD certification process in, in multiple stages. The first one is like this. You get a um, <clears throat> discussion over using these slides. And then, <clears throat> and then I do um, a joint examination with the person who need to be certified. So two babies are examined within half, half an hour of each other. And then 
uh, you need to get a similar score as, as my examination. That's how we do the certification process. But now we are going to <coughs> try this out online. So I'll show you some videos. The first few ones, like I said, we'll go through jointly. And then the final one you need to do on your own. And uh, we will try to certify you based on that. Now, these are the six uh, categories that we look at in the NICST examination. The first one is the level of consciousness, then spontaneous activity, posture, tone, reflexes, and autonomic system. Under the first four, you've got only one categories. But under the last two, primitive reflexes and autonomic system, you've got two categories. So when you have more than one category, you take whichever is highest. For example, if, if primitive reflexes, if the, the sec is uh, weak and poor, and, but more is complete, you take uh, this one, the worst one, which is weak and poor, which is under the mild. But I'll, I'll explain this in more detail as we go along. Now, if you are able to access the chat box, you'll see um, the certification uh, sheet um, as a bid document that is attached, and maybe you can just have a look at that. <clears throat> The important thing is that do the examination when the baby is awake and not sleeping. I mean, it's unlikely that baby would be sleeping soon after uh, you know, delivery and after going through um, a, a difficult time, but do make sure the baby is awake. If baby is, um, is sedated, just make a note of that. It may affect some part of your examination, but not all. Um, and the examination is still useful unless the baby is um, paralyzed as well, unless maybe it's most relaxed which is very unlikely these days, we don't give muscle relaxation um, um, for cooling therapy anymore. Now try to do the uh, least painful part of the examination first without disturbing the baby, and then do the most noxious one in the end, which is um, examination of pupils. There will be some uh, ambiguity, some overlap in some of these criteria, but that is deliberate. And whenever you are, you think you cannot decide between the categories you just go by the level of sensorium and whichever has got a higher level of sensorium you allocate to that so you start with the examination of the baby just a physical examination just a um, observation but when you observe for the level of consciousness you watch the baby how the baby is and also you give a gentle stimuli and then see how the baby is responding to that stimuli so if the baby is responding in a very exaggerated way. You know, you can just gently touch the baby and baby goes into a morrow. Um, <clears throat> that is uh, a baby who has got brain irritability or hyper alertness. And that will be classified as a uh, mild score, called as mild. But if the response is delayed, that is called as moderate. And we call that as lethargy, delayed response to stimuli. This is extremely important to know because often people misinterpret a baby who is not moving much um, as reduced level of consciousness. But here you are actually trying to see the response to a gentle stimuli, what response baby is doing. If it is exaggerated, it, it is mild. If it is delayed, if it is, uh, if it is delayed, it is moderate. If it's completely absent, that is severe, it's called as severe. That is level of consciousness. Now, the second one is um, spontaneous activity. Again, if the baby uh, moves all the limbs and changes position when awake, that is normal. If it's slightly reduced, um, it's mild. If it is markedly reduced, it's moderate. And if there is no activity at all, you code as severe. So that's how you code um, the spontaneous activity. And again, like I said, if the baby is sedated, then you use a clinical judgment. Um, you just make a note of that and, um, and make a clinical judgment of um, the spontaneous activity. Now the third one is so remember the babies have just come out of the womb where they were in a very nice and flexed position. So both your arms and legs are all flexed, and baby should uh, retain that position um, uh, in the first um, um, few hours and days after birth. But as you get more severe brain injury, that position is lost. So if you have a baby who is, has got severe encephalopathy, babe, the arms will be completely straight and often in abnormal disabled posturing. 
but if the injury is moderate again you lose your flexion of the elbow so it'll be more extended or baby may have a frog like uh, position if it is mild uh, um, um, encephalopathy often you see the flexion at elbow may be retained but you'll have good distal flexion so that's how you could um, the post as mild moderate or severe now the next one is assessment of tone so this is see the shankaran uh, looking assessing the tone of this baby um, we, unfortunately you cannot assess tone over videos but um, when we go through i just say what um, the tone was what i felt at that time um, again if the uh, you just need to get used to the, to the normal tone of your babies that you would already have doing your baby checks in in mild encephalopathy often you see a slight increase in the peripheral tone but if baby has got moderate encephalopathy typically what we see is low tone hypotonia generalized hypotonia occasionally we may see in an increased tone but if the encephalopathy is severe often you have a completely flaccid baby or very rarely a rigid baby so you can um, you just need to examine mainly the tone in the extremities especially the baby is ventilated but if the baby is not ventilated and and is quite stable you can do a ventral suspension as well to assess the tone of um, neck and trunk so that's the first four criteria and the second one uh, and the, uh, the fifth one is primitive reflexes and the final one is autonomic so under primitive reflexes we have two things one is suck and um, um, the other is moro and again you need to put a gloved finger or a clean finger to um, assess the suck if um, the baby is sucking vigorously you put that as normal if the suck is weak um, uh, or poor you, you score as mild if the suck is weak but has got, baby has got an abnormal bite so if you just keep the finger in for a minute or so you might think the suck is absent but then you suddenly get a bite that's an abnormal sign and often we see that in babies with moderate encephalopathy again if you've got a confusion about that then you look at the level of sensorium and then code whichever is the higher one in babies with severe encephalopathy suck will be absent now the final set is the uh, autonomic system and here we have three uh, three categories pupil heart rate and respiration for pu pupils try to use a pupil torch and you often need two people to look at the uh, pupil so one person opening the eyelid and the other person um, shining the light and and these are so if the uh, pupils are normal you score as a normal in mild typically you see a dilatation of pupils in moderate pupils are often small and constricted but you might have to make an allowance if baby is on heavy dose of morphine at the time and in um, severe you often see abnormal skew deviation of the eyes um, or asymmetrical pupils now um, the next one is heart rate again if the heart rate is normal you score um, normal which is 100 to 160 you score that as normal if the heart rate is elevated if the baby is called tachycardia uh, you score that as mild if if baby is called bradycardia you score that as moderate um, um, and but that's only if the baby is not on cooling therapy so once you start cooling therapy you cannot assess the heart rate because all the babies will have a, a low heart rate during cooling and in severe often it is variable so usually we uh, we listen either you look at the strength on the screen or just listen for a minute or two and make this decision about the heart rate the final one is respiration so again if the baby is breathing in air spontaneously you code that as normal if the baby is hyperventilating try to wash out um, the acidosis so you use code that as mild if the breathing is um, periodic uh, or irregular you score as moderate and all babies um, on ventilatory support we score as severe irrespective of whether the baby has spontaneous breathing above the ventilator or not so that is how um, the respiration is scored now like i said there are six categories so the maximum score you can get is only six although um, two of them has got more than one category you just take the highest one so this is one of the nicht examination completed for one of our cooling trials um, in india 
So this baby, you can see, these are the six categories, the level of consciousness, spontaneous activity, posture, tone, reflexes, and autonomic system. So you just put a circle around whichever is the uh, category you think baby fits to. So the first one, a level of consciousness, they have a circle lethargic. So that goes under moderate, one score here. The second spontaneous activities, they circled decrease activity. So that's again one here. The posture, um, which is moderate flexion of the distal joint, complete extension. Um, so again, you score one, so that's three. Tone is reduced, hypotonia, uh, one score here. Primitive reflexes, both are under, coded under moderate. So total of five. So these, although there are two of them here, you just take one, you just take the highest one, which is again, one score under moderate. So the total score you're getting is five under moderate. The baby's pupils are normal, heart rate is normal, but the baby is ventilated. So this allocation will go to the severe one here. So the score under um, severe is one and under moderate is five. Now we don't um, consider seizures in this classification, but any baby with seizure will be automatically considered as either moderate or severe. Um, having a moderate or severe encephalopathy. Now, the cooling criteria is that you should have three or more under moderate or severe. That is the criteria that uh, that has been established for the cooling therapy. Three or more scores under moderate or severe is the cooling criteria. Now, what do we do if the scores are same, three and three, in two of these? Then you go by the level of consciousness, whichever has got the highest, you allocate and that one. So that's how we do the NICT scoring. Now, so this is another baby. You can see this baby is, um, has got, just have a look at the sheet and see if we can um, um, make an assessment of the total score, just add up and see, and then I will tell you my scores in a bit. So level of consciousness is lethargy. That goes, so under moderate, you're giving one score there, spontaneous activity, decrease. So again, one under moderate. Posture is uh, flexion or complete extension. That's um, again, one under moderate. Tone, hypotonia, again, one for moderate. Primitive re reflexes, uh, suck is weak and poor, and there's a partial response to mo uh, tomorrow. So both are under mild. So you give um, one under mild, autonomic nervous system, your pupils are normal, that's under normal, but uh, heart rate, baby has got tachycardia, so that is scored in the mild. So altogether, you got four scores in moderate and two in mild. So the predominant category is moderate, um, so you classify this baby as having moderate encephalopathy, and this baby does not have seizures. So this is how you do the um, classification. Now, I will show you a couple of videos and then um, try and don't don't do the first one in the practice um, red cap on first red cap on yet. So um, I'll just talk you through um, this baby as as the new exam is being done. So this this is the scoring sheet that you'd have. So these examinations are done in a um, starting from the observation to the pupils in the end. So it may not follow the exact structure you have in the sheet, but just make a note of things that you can see. So here uh, you can see baby is already quite alert, active, and moving all the limbs. Just see how the baby is kicking around. So then you would, you don't need to stimulate this baby because the baby is already quite responsive. So the level of sensory, you would score this as a, as a normal um, baby with good spontaneous activity. There's a lot of uh, spontaneous moments. And look at this posture of this baby. So you've got good flexion um, uh, at elbow and at knees, and um, um, the hands are also opening and closing. So that again, you would score as, as normal.
So here we are examining the heart rate and he'll tell you the heart rate in a minute. So the heart rate is um, um, 120 to 140, which is normal and respiratory rate is also normal. Maybe it's not tachypneic. And then we are checking the peripheral tone. So this tone was um, normal and you can see how well the baby is sucking. So suck is also normal. And then now the moro, this is how you test the moro. So this is the complete moro. So you got a good, um, uh, good extension followed by the induction of the limbs. Can you see it's moving nicely and then coming back to the middle. That's a good and full moro. And then you're um, looking at the peoples. So peoples are normal. So on the light, it's two millimeter, which is which is called as normal. So this is essentially a normal um, baby. So you would probably score everything um, under normal. So there'll be six scores under normal. Or if you think the tone is slightly increased, again, you know, if even if you score one in mild for the tone or something, this baby will be still categorized as normal because then you're having five scores under normal and one under mild. Now then why there's a giveaway in this baby? Why um, is this baby having an NG tube then? If it's a healthy normal baby. So this was a baby who had just a finished cooling therapy. This is not a baby who's, um, who's just born with finished cooling therapy and, that, and now neurologically this baby is normal. Okay. Let me, I'm just going to show you the next practice exam. Um, but before that, I just want to make sure you are still there and awake. Um, just a minute. Any questions at this stage? Nicola, can we unmute? Hello? Yeah, any questions at this stage? Um, I haven't got any questions in the chat box. If anybody has any questions, um, type them in the chat box or you can unmute yourself to ask the question verbally if you want to do that. Nothing so far. Nothing so far. People still there or they left? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. No, we've yeah. still got a strong, healthy yeah. participants. <laughs> okay, I can see their names as well. So I'm just going to ask them questions then if they're not asking me. Shall I? Okay, so the next video now I'm just going to send you that link um, again. Or um, let me see if I can send that link where they need to access the um, red cap, um, Nicola. Okay, so um, resending that link. Um, it was in the chat box. I'm just trying to find it again. Yeah, I've got it. Yeah. So there's a link now in the chat box. I think that's the link that people need to follow. Is that correct? Yeah. So if people can um, click on the link on their mobile phone, ideally, and then when I show the video, if they can score. People got the video link now. I'll show the video a couple of times so you can um, watch it initially and then um, score it. Okay, that's the first one. So the second case is the one. Second case is the practice one. So if you got the link, you can you can start scoring the second case. So anybody who hasn't got the link.
So you need to examine for each of the six categories we discussed. You can either make a note on your paper and then tran uh, transfer it to the um, uh, onto the red cap link, or you can do it in real time. So you look at how the baby is moving. Did that that is normal or decreased? So this is the heart rate of the baby and respiration you missed. Sorry, I'll show that to you again. So 114 respiration is fine. So you're looking at the tone of the upper extremities <coughs> and the lower extremities. So the tone, um, of course, you cannot make out on video, but that was slightly increased, both in upper and lower extremities. Now look at the suck of this baby. And the moro. Just look at the threshold um, that is needed to elicit the moro. So this is the pupil torch. You should have this at um, <clears throat> on the bedside. And the pupil, so three millimeters. Yeah. And then now you score. And just run the video again once more. Let me start from here. I'm good, I got already 20 responses here. I think 20 people have attempted, but I can't see any responses yet. As yet, maybe people are just entering. I'll keep on running this one while you enter.
I got four people who completed so far. Let's run this again. Okay, so now let's look at the responses. I think we got quite a few responses now. Um, Okay, can you see my screen? So, um, so I'll just go through the diff how you scored um, this baby. So, uh, level of consciousness, um, most of you scored this baby as moderate. Now, the thing to remember is you, level of consciousness, you're looking at the response to the stimuli you're giving. So although the baby is not moving much, you can see when I, when I was doing the morrow, you can see the moment you touch the baby, there's a response, there's a hyper alertness. Um, so I had scored this baby as having mild um, under level of consciousness. Um, yeah, but, and some of you had scored as normal. So whichever way you, way you score, just one code, it doesn't necessarily affect your final a categorization. So as we go through that, it be become apparent. So um, spontaneous activity, yes, that's definitely decreased. Now the question is whether it's severely decreased or mildly decreased. Um, so some of you are given um, that under the moderate and some of you uh, under mild. The posture, like I said, it's slightly, it was slightly increased, it's not markedly increased slightly increase in sorry and the posture uh, in the posture you can see there's a good flexion at the elbows and knees so if it is moderate you would lose that you will have an in a straight upper limbs and or a frog leg position so the posture was definitely either normal or mild so that should not be scored under moderate tone like i said it's uh, slightly increased so that is under mild that's fine Suck, um, I agree, you could score either as uh, weak or there's a good suck, so either mild or strong would do. With Moro, the baby clearly had a very low threshold. The moment you touch the baby, a very minimal angle um, of drop, the baby was having a Moro replace. That's definitely exaggerated. So I wouldn't score this as moderate at all. In moderate, I'll show you 
in different videos in a way you will either the, the response will be markedly delayed if it is moderate so this is definitely under mild or if we, if we score that as normal that's also fine so the overall primitive reflex score um, which is the maximum which is the maximum score from second model um, was under mild which is one for most people and then for some that came to moderate now when you look at the pupils because it's under the light under light you can say it is normal it's not um, i think it was two millimeters in it yeah so it's not um, dilated as such you can see normal heart rate was definitely normal and the respiration was normal i mean this baby was not hyperventilating um heart rate was was less than 60. so your overall score um let me show you the graph yeah so some of you have scored this baby under moderate so half of them um scored under uh, half of you scored under moderate and half of you under mild that may be predominantly i suspect how you looked at the level of sensorium so you need to look at um, the response of the baby to any stimuli to decide that um, and certainly this i would not agree the posture of this baby is not um, like a baby with moderate and low um, grief and again in a moro is not in the moderate so this baby um, has got mild encephalopathy so mild my assessment was that there was five scores under mind and one under normal. Now you might ask why this baby was getting cooling therapy and that was probably distraction. But this is what ha often happens um, at Imperial and elsewhere in the UK. Many babies, like I said, we cool these days have um, mild and uh, And this baby was also on morphine. You can see on the labels of one of the infusion that baby was receiving morphine infusion. Okay, now any questions before I show you the final um, assessment uh, video? If not, I'll just show you this video and then uh, any, any other questions we can take it in the end. So this is the last video. You need to look at this and then score as you did um, earlier. Let's put on two.
So Harini has just put the link to the final certification in the chat box. So once you watch this video, you can complete um, the final certification one. I'll just run this for one more time and then we'll stop there to take any questions. People 30 millimeters.
sorry, so people's are two millimeters, heart rate is around 140, um, respiration mass around 35, so all um, heart rate respiration was normal. People around two millimeters, heart rate and respiration normal. Okay, so I'll stop there now and then take any question see if you can enter this as well in the red camp and then i will get an email um, and i'll contact you separately for the feedback nicola do you mind just unmuting all for any questions Actually, I'm not sure I can. Do you want people to unmute themselves? Any questions? Uh, Remia, can you hear me? Any questions? Yeah, I can hear you. I just had one question. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Oh, yeah. So what happens if um, they're on any medications or anything that might make them like bradycardic or drop their respirate? Okay, I think only Salah has submitted the response. So Salah, can you um, explain what was the scoring uh, you gave? Uh, uh, hello, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Hi. Uh, so uh, I gave uh, for the the child was having some uh, moderate. Uh, my interpretation was moderate neural encephalopathy. Moderate neural encephalopathy. Few more responses are coming through. There was only the normal finding was with respect to the autonomic function. Uh, which was all normal. Uh, otherwise, uh, the, uh, the ch child was having some extended posture, which is uh, related to the moderate level, and the uh, responses was also limited. So, only the same number also less. So, this, uh, all in all, I uh, got moderate symptoms. Yeah. A few more responses are coming through. In that case, I can just share these data as well. Okay, let me share this data as the results are coming through.
Okay, the most of them are completed. Okay. I'll just explain the files. So most of you have uh, coded as moderate and category, which is correct. So the level of sensorium, we'll just go through the categories. The level of sensorium in this baby, um, you can see when you give any response, the response is very delayed. When you give any stimuli, the response is very delayed. So that is clearly um, a sign of moderate and category. And this is what we say as lethargy. As opposed to the previous one, when you give stimuli, the baby was responding um, very briskly to minimal stimuli. So the time of response was very short in the previous one, but was delayed in this case. So this is lethargy, and that is a sign of um, a moderate encephalopathy. Now, spontaneous activity was definitely reduced, um, but baby had some moments. It's not like Baby is completely flat, completely uh, motionless. Baby had some moments, but markedly reduced. Again, I would score that as moderate. Um, posture, baby had um, quite a bit of extension of the um, elbows, if you noticed. So there's a loss of uh, flexion um, at the distal joints, at the elbow, and also the leg. Occasional kind of frog leg, although not typical frog leg. Again, that would uh, I would score that under moderate. Tone was definitely reduced. There was moderate. Uh, there was hypotonia, which was generalized. Suck. Um, I agree. Most of you scored suck. Um, let me see this. can't see it here, but suck was, um, you could score that as normal or you can score that as weak or something. But with a moro, there was a complete absence of moro. So then that would take this baby um, to the severe. Key. So you would have scored uh, severe for that. And um, pupils, you can either score as normal or constricted, which would be under um, um, moderate. Uh, and heart rate and respiration was normal. So the total score I gave was five under moderate and one under severe, which was for the absent moral. So that's how you do the NICST examination and most of, most of you got, got it um, correct as moderate and capability. So thank you, that's all um, about the NICST examination. Um, is there any questions you want to ask? Just a reminder to everyone, you can type the questions in the chat box or you can unmute yourself and ask, ask the question direct. Nicola, can you hear? Yes. So there's a question gone into the chat box there. Can you see the chat box, Sudin? Um, with the pupils, as somebody is asking when you're doing examination, how can you say, you need to have pupil torch. So um, uh, in the second video that I showed, there's a pupil torch, which we should keep at bedside. Um, let me try and show you the people torch can you see the markings on the people torch and then you just compare with that uh, people size with the, those markings I think yeah, that's the best way to 
but essentially you are looking for a, a good dilatation metriasis in mild HI or whether it's constricted. When it is constricted, you just need to make a uh, note whether it's due to morphine or if it's due to the underlying HI. Any, any questions? You can just type in the chat box. I think I can't, you are still muted, maybe. Well, if, if there is no other questions, I think we can uh, stop here. Um, I just want to remind you the next talk is by Jane Davis on cystic um, fibrosis. So that would be again Thursday, um, same time. Sorry, some more questions. So if it is considered due to morphine, then um, you wouldn't know. But so earlier on, it's unlikely unless you're giving a big dose of morphine. You need to make a clinical judgment whether uh, the, the constriction of people is due to. Uh, morphine or is it due to HIE? If you're assessing a baby within a uh, couple of hours after birth, it, it is likely to be uh, not morphine um, and likely to be more like more due to the HIE. But if it is on day two or day three where morphine would have accumulated, you may see more, more of the morphine effects. And you should do the examination not in the first hour, you should do it only between after first hour of first hour of after birth because often. Babies can look quite depressed and down yeah. in the first hour. Um, so don't do this in the labor room, only after baby is admitted to an, an IC and is stabilized, you do the NICST examination. In ventilated uh, babies, you can check as long as you don't get, uh, you don't dislodge the endotracheal tube. Um, you can just uh, disconnect the baby from the ventilator for uh, a few seconds and do the model. Any other questions, you can just type it in the chat box. Okay. Well, if not, um, we'll, um, we'll stop here. So um, see you all again um, next Thursday.